Earlier today, the World Anti-Doping Agency's 12-member executive committee voted unanimously to implement a four-year international sports ban on Russia after WADA investigators found that the country tampered with drug testing data earlier this year. Russia's anti-doping agency, Rusada, will have three weeks to appeal WADA's decision to the Court of Arbitration for Sport and is expected to do so. Today's ruling will prevent Russia from having any formal presence at both the 2020 Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo and the 2022 Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. The punishment issued by WADA will also prevent Russian officials and representatives from attending any of the events, and it will prevent Russia from hosting or bidding to host a major event within the next four years. WADA also announced that Russia isn't allowed to bid for the Olympic or Paralympic Games in 2032, regardless of whether the bidding process takes place during or after the ban. An important caveat to the ruling is that Russian teams and athletes will still be allowed to compete as long as they are not linked to positive doping tests or the data tampering case. This is similar to the 2018 Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang when Russian athletes competed under a neutral flag as Olympic athletes from Russia. The OAR earned 17 medals, including two gold medals, one being won by the men's hockey team and the other by figure skater Alina Zagitova. The WAD president, Craig Reedy, said in a statement that the decision illustrated the agency's desire to act resolutely in the face of the Russian doping crisis. For too long, Russian doping has detracted from clean sport. The blatant breach by the Russian authorities of Rusada's reinstatement conditions demanded a robust response. That is exactly what has been delivered today. Well, fellow members of WADA's executive committee disagree. Linda Hofstad Helleland, a Norwegian lawmaker who serves on the executive committee, has long pushed for a tougher line against Russia and was not satisfied with today's ruling. Helleland is quoted as saying, I'm not happy with the decision we made today, but this is as far as we could go. This is the biggest sports scandal the world has ever seen. I would expect now a full admission from the Russians and for them to apologize on all the pain all the athletes and sports fans have experienced. I would have preferred to support a blanket ban today, unless we impose sanctions that really wake Russian leaders up, hold them accountable, and make them acknowledge the facts, how can we be sure that the system will ever change? Tyler Tilgert, CEO of the United States anti-doping agency USADA, felt WADA's punishment was not strong enough. They argued that the Russian athletes should be banned from international competition entirely. To allow Russia to escape a complete ban is yet another devastating blow to clean athletes, the integrity of sport, and the rule of law. And in turn, the reaction by all those who value sport should be nothing short of a revolt against this system to force reform. Jonathan Taylor, chairman of the WADA Compliance Review Committee, stated, While I understand the calls for a blanket ban on all Russian athletes, whether or not they are implicated by the data, it was the unanimous view of the Compliance Review Committee that in this case, those who could prove their innocence should not be punished. Russia has long been in WADA's crosshairs amid a series of doping scandals that are believed to date back to at least the 2012 Olympic Games in London, of which WADA has eight more months to investigate. Most notably, a WADA-sponsored investigation found that more than 1,000 Russian athletes were involved in state-sponsored doping. During the 2014 Olympics in Sochi, investigators found that Russian agents helped swap dirty urine samples for clean ones through a hole in the wall at the laboratory in the Olympic Village. In 2015, WADA ruled that the Russian anti-doping agency was non-compliant with its code and suspended Rusada. Then, after being granted conditional reinstatement in 2018, Russia's attempts to deceive them continued. As part of its conditional reinstatement, Rusada was required to hand over data from its lab in Moscow by the end of December 2018. Not only did Russia miss the deadline by two weeks, but the World Anti-Doping Agency later found that the data had been removed, altered, or fabricated in an effort to hamper the work of investigators and keep the reputations of its athletes. 
The database also included fabricated messages to and from whistleblower Grigory Rudchenkov, who used to run the laboratory, in an attempt to shift blame from the Russian government. The only issue was that some messages were sent after Rodchenkov went into hiding in the United States. WADA found that someone in the Moscow laboratory was still tampering with the data into 2019. Rusada has said that the tampering will prevent it from pursuing cases against as many as 145 athletes. The 145 athletes have yet to be named, and they are included in WADA's target group of the most suspicious athletes from 2012 through 2015, and they would not be allowed to compete at the upcoming Olympics. About one-third of them are still active in sport. Though it is possible that the names may be made public, the full list from the Twyer 2018 games never were. Russian sports stars and coaches have taken to social media and newspapers to decry outrage, including Adelina Sotnikova, Svetlana Horkina, and Yurina Slutskaya. Tatiana Tarasova spoke out against the disgrace, and famed coach Alexei Mishin stated he believes that Russia may need to host alternatives to the Olympic Games. This is reminiscent of prior to the 2018 Olympics, when Russian athletes used the rallying cry, No Russia, No Games, on social media, and then went on to compete under the neutral flag, and its former athletes supported the current athletes. As this is the skating lesson, I thought it was only appropriate to outline some important issues to see how this will impact the sport of figure skating. Should CAS and the IOC uphold the ruling, the following issues will become noteworthy. Will Cup of Russia continue to be allowed to be held as part of the ISU Grand Prix series? Or will the ISU deem that it is not considered a major event? The event could be moved to a country such as Fia or Finland. Senja Stolbova and Ivan Bukin were both banned from competing at the 2018 Olympic Games, though the details of their failed or missed drug tests were never revealed. Will they be permitted to compete at the upcoming Olympic Games in 2022? Typically, athletes banned for doping are not permitted to be allowed back into sport. But those two athletes have been allowed to compete at all other ISU-sanctioned events, aside from the 2018 Olympics. Will any figure skaters be on the list of 145 athletes who are considered highly suspicious? And will any figure skaters' names have been found to be deleted from the laboratory data? What do you think about the ruling? Are the sanctions heavy enough? Are they too heavy? Do you think that Russia should have a blanket ban? And should the Cup of Russia be allowed to continue to be a part of the ISU Grand Prix series? Please comment below, and if you're new here, please subscribe and let me know if you like this video in the comments.